insulation booth, a pair of them for guitars and for the bass, and then uh, some racks with pedals and stuff back there. And here's the tracking room. We're, we're set up at the moment for overdubs, which means we're kind of everything is sort of willy nilly. Uh, there's just shit everywhere. But basically, today we're going to do some keyboards, we're going to do some vocals. So we have a vocal setup here. This is a Chandler Red mic. Uh, my friend Wade uh, at Chandler built these in cahoots with Abbey Road, the studio, EMI. And I love it. It's a really brilliant microphone. It sounds very similar to a 47 or a 48. This really sounds great. If we make our way over here, this is what we would call the Wallow guitars. These are a combination of Tim's amps, my amps, my assistant Mike's amps. We just line them all up here, make a big stack, and just start plugging into things until we find something that we really love. Got a really cool tune out of uh, Tim's uh, little uh, Deluxe and this little Gibson GT6. Real low wattage amps that just sounded great, wide open, just dimed. Over here is a, some excess amps, pedals, effects, microphones, a couple racks for snares, Moog synth, and um, Korg synth, a couple of Korg synths, Roland synth, a Mophie, a bunch more microphones, pedals, blah, 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 and my piano. Uh, my piano is a 29 Kimball. It's really cool. We're going to use it today on some tracks. I have a lot of stuff, but uh, I don't buy a lot of new stuff. I sort of try my best to buy stuff that I know sort of works. I've got a couple other stuff here, a Royer uh, microphone up here, and a SF24 that's great. Uh, this is an AER88, it's a stereo ribbon mic. Uh, it's one of my favorite microphones ever made. Uh, it's just beautiful for percussion, for, for overheads, for room mics, for acoustic instruments, it's fantastic. Uh, this is an Ampex 1101. This was made in the 60s or 70s. 50s, 60s, I, I don't know, and sold with Ampex reel-to-reel -reel tape machines to little hi-fi geeks or people who just wanted a tape recorder in their house for their family. It's got a weird little shape and it's got a quarter inch cable on it. I use this into some pedals in my control room for distortion and delay and flanging and coursing and things. So sometimes I'll want a real sort of weird kind of distorted sound and I'll I just set this out here and I'll swing it in front of a guitar amp or I'll swing it over like we did vibes the other day. I'll swing it over here by the vibes or I'll put it by this uh, RCA 77 uh, when we're doing percussion and I get like distorted shakers or just a crunchy tambourine or flanged tambourine or some some sort of weird thing I'll come up with in there in the control room. This is my B3. I think it's a 57. It was refurbished by uh, Analog Outfitters. Uh, they rebuild B3s. They rebuild M3s, Hammond products. They also make a whole line of amplifiers and they make a really cool effects unit in there that I have called a scanner. It's just really beautiful. It's a vibrato pedal that's about this big <laughs> that's made out of the vibrato scanner out of a B3. They run, it's like running your guitar through the through not the Leslie, but like through the actual B3. It's really awesome. Got a Wurlitzer, it's really awesome, really loud. Up here above, if you can see, there's this, I call it the drum loft. This is the loft of drums that, you know, we use from time to time. And we hop up on the piano and climb up there and hand them down. There's all kinds of different drum sets up there. Uh, my my uh, Leedy drum sets up there that I love so much. It's a 47 Leedy. Um, I've got a 49 Leedy. I've got a new sort of little, little 18 inch Gretsch kit that's really cool. I've got one of Meg White's. They had these, they were in the warehouse at Jack's place and I asked him to buy one. He just, he was like, nah, you can just have it. So that's kind of cool. 